और आए ही हैज बीन डिसमिस्ड फ्रॉम द सर्विस ऑफ पाकिस्तान और सर्विस ऑफ अ कॉर्पोरेशन और ऑफिस सेटअप और कंट्रोल्ड बाय द फेडरल गवर्नमेंट प्रोविंशियल गवर्नमेंट और अ लोकल गवर्नमेंट ऑन द ग्राउंड्स ऑफ मिसकंडक्ट अनलेस अ पीरियड ऑफ 5 इयर्स हैज इलैप्स्ड सिंस हिज डिसमिसल और ही हैज बीन रिमूव्ड और कंपलसरीली रिटायर्ड फ्रॉम द सर्विस ऑफ पाकिस्तान और सर्विस ऑफ अ कॉर्पोरेशन और ऑफिस सेटअप और कंट्रोल्ड बाय द फेडरल गवर्नमेंट प्रोविंशियल गवर्नमेंट और अ लोकल गवर्नमेंट ऑन द ग्राउंड्स ऑफ मिसकंडक्ट अनलेस अ पीरियड ऑफ 3 years has elapsed since his removal or compulsory retirement or he has been in the service of pakistan or of any statutory body or any body which is owned or controlled by the government or in which the government has a controlling share or interest unless a period of 2 years has elapsed since he ceased to be in such service or he whether by himself or by any person or body of persons in trust for him or for his benefit or on his account or as a member of a hindu undivided family has any share or interest in a contract not being a contract between a cooperative society and government for the supply of goods to or for the execution of any contract or for the performance of any service undertaken by government provided that the disqualification under this paragraph shall not apply to a person one where the share or interest in the contract devolves on him by inheritance zara baat na kare mike ke samne lahore se आपकी आवाज यहाँ आ रही है शुक्रिया जी जी provided that the disqualification under this paragraph shall not apply to a person one where the share or interest in the contract devolves on him by inheritance or succession or as a legatee executor or administrator until the expiration of 6 months after it has so devolved on him two where the contract has been entered into by or on behalf of a public company as defined in the company's ordinance 1984 of which he is a shareholder but is not a director holding an office of profit under the company or three where he is a member of a hindu undivided family and the contract has been entered into by any other member of that family in the course of carrying on a trust or explanation in this article goods so, uh, it, it is ko skip karke not M- disqualification g so we can come to m m pe chale g he holds any office of profit in the service of pakistan other than the following offices name namely again an office which is not whole some whole time office remunerated either by salary or by fee to the office of lumberdar whether called by this or any other title three the qaumi razakars for any office the holder whereof by virtue of such office is liable to be called up for military training or military service under any law providing for the constitution or raising of a force or n he has obtained a loan for an amount of 2 million rupees or more from any bank financial institution cooperative society or cooperative body in his own name or in the name of his spouse or any of his dependents which remains unpaid for more than 1 year from the due date or has got such loan uh, loan written off or o oh, he or his spouse or any of his dependents has defaulted in payment of government dues and utility expenses including telephone electricity gas and water charges in excess of 10000 rupees for over 6 months at the time of filing his nomination papers or p he is for the time being disqualified from being elected or chosen as a member of the majlis e shura parliament or of a provincial provincial assembly under any law for the time being in force explanation for the purposes of this paragraph law shall not include an ordinance promulgated under article 89 or article 128 2 then it's if any question arises whether a member of majlis e shura parliament has become disqualified from being a member the speaker or as the case may be the chairman shall unless he decides that no such question has arisen refer the question to the election commission within 30 days and if he fails to do so within the aforesaid period it shall be deemed to have been referred to the election commission three the election commission shall decide the question within 90 days from its receipt or deemed to have been received and if it is of the opinion that the member has become dis- qualified he shall cease to be a member and his seat shall um, become vacant and then 63 is disqualification on ground of defection how would you distinguish actually. between 62 and 63 my lord my lord uh, now of course uh, 62 is qualification and uh, 63 is disqualification but uh, both these conditions are applicable 
at the time of entry at the entry point which is to say that when the uh, when a candidate files his nomination papers for uh, parliament or provincial assembly uh, must be eligible under both 62 and not ineligible under 63. Mm -hmm. And subsequently, if once a member gets elected, then again, he must... No, it doesn't say elected. It says the person shall be disqualified from being elected. From being elected. So yes, it's pre-election. G-62, as I said. 63. G-63 also, uh, it says from being elected. Oh, no. But uh, sub, sub, sub Article 3 says if he is a member. If he is a member, then and if, that case. if there is anything, for example, uh, now there, oh, are, uh, there could be few instances. If you just, let's go to 62. Certain things are uh, factual. That's right, sir. He is a citizen of Pakistan. Age. Either he is or he is not. Gee. And the Two age. is age of 25 years. And I mean, then, that's also fact. Either right. you and are or you're not. There's no debate right. here. And then being on the electoral rolls of a province, that is also factual. factual. Now we go to C. Uh, that's again with relation factual. to factual. Now comes the more difficult ones. D to G. Which are, I imagine, not easy to ascertain. He's of good character. And which? Are you of good character, Attorney General? Don't answer that. <laughs> no, depends how you see me. <laughs> you know, That's what I had to say. Please that. don't answer that. Okay. <laughs> Not suggesting anything. No, but what? But I'm just saying, this, this actually uh, says I'm just saying your supporters may say excellent character yes. and your detractors may say but horrible very character. It's subjective how yeah. you see, how you perceive what is a good character. What is good character? So it is. And who, who, will uh, who will determine it? Who will determine it? Yes. So that that these are also all open ended. You know, I, and I, if you we see D, and it goes on to say who, uh, not commonly known as one who violates injun uh, Islamic injunctions. Yeah. So here it is. You may be in absolute violation of Islamic injunctions, but not. But if it known. is not known. Yes. So, uh, okay, so it's a very strange sort of wording. That's right. Then we go to E. He has adequate knowledge of Islamic teachings. Yeah. I don't know how many will pass <laughs> muster in this courtroom. Yeah. Uh, what level of Islamic teachings <laughs> we are talking about. Right. And practices obligatory duties prescribed by Islam as well as abstains from major sins. Okay, now we all pray for forgiveness of our sins. That's so right. we are all sinners in that way. He is sagacious, righteous, non-profligate, honest and amin. There being no declaration to the contrary by a court of law. Now this is tied up with the court of law clause. The court of law, for instance, the cases before us were people not possessing a degree or producing a fake degree or not a recognized degree. So there is some sort of declaration that this was a stipulation. Now there is another thing inbuilt with that. The constitution never provided for a degree. Yeah. That's subordinate legislation. The constitution did not want you to be a, a, a graduate. I think that was inserted in 2008. Yeah. Uh, by Musharraf was then the president. 2002. 2002. 2002. Okay. So, but it is not one of the prescribed conditionalities either of 62 or 63. It was perhaps introduced under clause P, sub, uh, sub clause P of uh, sub clause 1 of 63. 63 1 P, which permits uh, prescribing additional disqualifications through Can an we, act of uh, Read it again. Uh, P, 1 P, kya hai? Ji. He is for the time being disqualified from being elected or chosen as a member of the Majlis Ashura, Parliament, or of a provincial assembly under any law for the time being in force. Now, here the word time being has been used twice. Yeah. It could have said he is disqualified for being elected. Yes. So time being. Yes. And it's been used, the word time being has been used twice in this thing. So it it assumes it's not a permanent disqualification. That's, that's, I don't know. That was the that's what the first usage of for the time being actually indicates what my lord has just observed that perhaps it is a time bound disqualification which can be introduced through a statute. Okay. Now, with regard to the disqualification of, uh, did the law for degrees, the law did not provide a time period disqualification. 
So the Supreme Court in the case of Samula Baloch held that since no disqualification period has been prescribed, it will be forever. So, for a permanent so, so long as the declaration is in the field, the disqualification stays. And That's the what. to be resolved now, if the judgment of the Supreme Court also stands and the law also stands, that till the law came into effect, that may have been the position, but since the law has now occupied the field of legislation and prescribed a particular period of time, unless we hear a challenge to the law, which there is no challenge to the law, then why should we disregard the law? That's one way of looking at it. And we don't need to touch the judgment at all, because at that time, this aspect of the matter had not been legislated upon either in the Constitution or by law. So then the courts kind of filled in the vacuum and said that it should be lifetime because there is no period of disqualification. So Samula Balo judgment stays intact, but the law has come in place and it is in the nature of a non obstante clause. That's one reading of it. What do you have to say to that? So the question would be, can the sub-constitutional legislation control the constitution? So that is one, and then the second would be, um, can there be legislative overruling of a judgment without first removing the basis on which the judgment came out? So, well, can we go to the judgment now of the Supreme Court? My Lord, uh, relevant, uh, relevant G provisions, G whatever you think are relevant for our reading. Paragraphs, my Lord. We, G -G. Paragraph 35 A. G 35 and plus 434 page G. So this is PLD 2018 Supreme Court 405. This charge judgment. One thing is very important. Reference is पहले इसके अंदर ना चार जजमेंट हैं उसके साथ पे समय उल्लाइन. जी. एक इम्तियाज अहमद का केस है, अब्दुल गफार गफूर है, एक मोहम्मद खान है और एक अलादीनो Aladino Bayo, first Aladino Bayo, and then the review which came out later in 2020, and the court took, took a somewhat different view. So Mr. Attorney General, to nullify uh, Samila Baloch, the amendment would have been in the Constitution. My Lord, uh, and uh, th that's why I. I mean, if you're looking at the basis of the judgment, yeah. the basis of the judgment emanates from the Constitution. Yeah. So, unless the Constitution were to be amended, Samila Baloch could not be undone. So, uh, because Samuela Baloch is interpreting a constitutional provision and uh, Samuela Baloch uh, basically holds that the declaration which is referred to in 62.1f has to remain in field till such time, uh, uh, till such time the declaration in the field, the disqualification stands, then uh, what my Lord has observed uh, carries. Uh, there is no time limit provided under Article 62. So there are no time limits as far as, as my Lord, the Chief Justice had just uh, uh, gone through, took, took us through uh, clauses A through G. Now, as far as D, E, F so are concerned, they are all uh, with, without any timeline. Now, the question before you, Lordship, and it was also argued in Samula Baloch. In fact, uh, all the councils well, before first, Samula first, Baloch. If, if we consider that through Samula Baloch, the Constitution has been amended, then the constitutional amendment is required, as per my understanding. My Lord, uh, it is interpretation. Gee, by, my Lord, uh, right with respect, Samula Baloch also read something into the constitution which was not provided. And, uh, uh, like, what did they read into the My Lord, uh, while comparing now, in say, while examining 62.1f, the court held that so long as the declaration is in the field, this disqualification stands. While well, at the same time, when they were examining 63.1h, which is under 63 and relates to moral turpitude, which includes dishonesty, and there is a five-year time limit, the court took a different view while examining both, and it said that, uh, you know, because there is a personal cost price that a person has prepared by going to prison, so therefore, five years is good enough. But what the court did not, or with respect, overlook was that in both cases, the declarations are there. Now, in 63.1h, there is a conviction which stands. Mm. It's so only it's that a, it's really a question of interpretation because what's very interesting, speaking for myself, if you look at 63 uh, G, H, and I, yes. I mean, most of the heinous crimes, uh, especially against the integrity and sovereignty of the country, and that person can be allowed to contest election. 
where there are punishments, he goes through punishments and comes out and contests the election. What is a bit odd is that a civil declaration, which is just for some misdemeanor, like misconduct, which doesn't even carry a criminal punishment. Absolutely. That carries an absolute bar for the rest of the life. That seems to be a bit odd because if you commit murder, you commit treason, you commit whatever, you can come back and test election. But if you just forget to write something in the form, uh, you would be out forever. And, and so how does one reconcile? So it's a matter of interpretation. Yes, so that is what my respectful submission would be because in both, in G, H and also in I, there is an, an adverse finding against the person, a declaration by a court of law against that person in those proceedings. Those declarations, of course, subsist. He serves the time or whatever punishment provided by law and then he can come back in after five years. Now here, while looking at 62.1f, where there is this, uh, the standard of proof is lower compared to those criminal proceedings under 63.1h, which is beyond any shadow of doubt and that declaration has still come out beyond any shadow of doubt. And here is preponderance of evidence or somewhere between the two and uh, here the person is out forever. But before we go into that, could you just explain to us how can any court, a civil court, grant declaration which is in the negative? I mean, how can a court grant a declaration that you're not sagacious? That cannot happen. So how does that work? I mean, I've been always perplexed about this. We can't get a negative declaration from any court. Can a court say that you're not sagacious? Why would that happen? Because no civil proceedings could lead to a negative declaration. It's always positive. So I don't understand how a court will ever give such a declaration. So then most of the courts which have given this declaration are the constitutional courts. So you have... That's another question. Case. And in those cases, is the declaration absolutely clear? I mean, does it say that you're not sagacious or then we infer from the judgment that because you presented a fake degree, as a consequence, we understand that you are not a mean. I mean, I, let me just go yes. to the language of 62.1f to understand what do we mean by declaration. Declaration and also what is a court of law because, and I say this and my Lord has just observed, in Ishaq Akwani's case in 2015, a seven member bench actually framed these four questions. They left it them unanswered for some other case in future and those questions were that what would be that court which is to give this, uh, this sort of declaration? What, what would happen the then in that case? They left it open, sir. These questions were not not answered by a seven-member bench. So, the, which court would it be? What procedure would it follow? What would be the standard of proof? And who will have the locus standi? Now, these are the questions which are very, very relevant for the purposes of a, for this declaration by a court of law. And then also whether uh, the courts exercising, let's say, constitutional jurisdiction who cannot record evidence, where witnesses cannot be cross-examined, a person who against whom an allegation has been brought cannot really defend himself as is, he is able to in a trial, would that, would the declaration so, so, coming so from a constitutional court fact, suffice for 62 so, so, Attorney General, the question which has been there for a while now is first of all, can there be a civil court granting a negative declaration, number one, and number two, the question is that in a constitutional proceedings, where there is no evidence being taken, the court has arrived at a decision that a fake degree has been, for example, I don't know what the other cases are, fake degree has been presented by this person, does not necessarily mean that he, the court is moving further and saying that you are now a non-sagacious or whatever. It's simply saying in this particular matter, a false degree was presented. But I don't know of any judgment where they've actually gone ahead and said then as a consequence, you're a fraud. <laughs> So I don't know, so is there a declaration actually coming out of the constitutional court also? And can they, without taking any evidence, give such a declaration about a person? My, my respectful submission is, my lord, that uh, a constitutional court. Now, mindful that this seven-member bench left these questions open, but then there are two judgments. Uh, one in uh, uh, in uh, PLD 2015, Supreme Court 265, which is Panama 1, uh, <coughs> Justice Ijaz Abdul Khan, speaking for majority, said that a court of law for the purposes of 62.1f would be a court which can actually record evidence, which is a plenary court of original, revisional, appellate jurisdiction in civil and criminal proceedings. 
But without then, recording evidence, declaration can be given? Cannot be given. Yes. And then the same... In but even a negative declaration cannot negative be given, even declaration. if you record evidence. Sir. Right. I That's don't right. understand right. this. Sir. And then in Aladino Bhaiyo, the second Aladino Bhaiyo, the review Aladino Bhaiyo, uh, they re revisited the original judgment which was given in 2013, where under it was held that uh, once a declaration at 62 f is given, it does not whether away go away with the flux of time okay, but but the declaration mein to ye hai na ke person may not file his own case for declaring him i mean yeah somebody has to challenge his that's right. character that's right then in cat case the declaration will come whether he is i mean sagacious righteous or not yeah so ye declaration hoga na khud to ja ke nahi mang sakta declaration so negative as per somebody will come challenging so, sirf paternity pe ho sakta hai shayad ek exception hai 42 mein there is yeah. no other exception yeah. section 42 mein to legal character koi deny karta hai to suit file hota hai na if right. somebody is denying his legal character then he can file the suit under section 42 of the civil act that's right okay sir aur agar aap constitution courts ke cases bhi le le na to for example somebody has not for example election tribunal says that uh, the uh, nomination form mein falan cheez nahi hai to mis declaration inhone ki chal ye baat to ho gayi inhone mis declaration ki ab iska kya matlab phir hum khud jodte hain hum kehte hain ki kyunki mis declaration ki hai isliye phir aap ameen nahi hain isliye 621 f lag but the court has not said it the court is not declaring that you are uh, uh, non sagacious or not ameen but the court is simply saying you have filed uh, there has been a mis declaration in the form so us pe zara how do we actually get where is the declaration actual declaration from the court so us pe kahin par wo correction ke bhi provision hai ab jo nomination papers hai but your so motto declaration hai ya koi case file hone ke baad hai ye declaration now this is again very interesting because uh, in 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 uh, some judgments in sher alam's case for example the court says that uh, a writ for co warranto can be filed and that obviously comes in constitutional jurisdiction and in fact the court can this court can take su moto notice under 1843 and gives co warranto article 199 it is totally different Bilkul. the person but the has push, to show under what authority of law he is enjoying the office that's right sir but to office mein jaane ke baad hai not prior to the office mein jaane ke baad hoga but as far as that declaration is concerned question is can that declaration be given in those proceedings or for that the person has to somebody has to go to civil court or some court which has the original jurisdiction to try and uh, receive evidence uh, uh, allow the the person against whom an allegation has been brought to cross examine ek cheez zara dekhiye come back to article 62 read g he has not after the establishment of pakistan worked against the integrity of the country or opposed the ideology of Pakistan. Yes. Now, if we read 62 1G on its own with the judgment of Samyullah case, the ban is lifetime ban. But, but, some, but uh, if we read them together. But, but, uh, yeah. but okay. uska bhi now read 63 1G. It's the same language, ideology of Pakistan. G -G for propaganda. And here it prescribes a ban for five years. G or the sovereignty, integrity, or security of Pakistan. No, it's the same 62-1G and 63-1G right. are more or less similarly worded. That's right. It is working against integrity or opposed to the ideology of Pakistan. That's right, sir. Now, if we apply Sabula Baloch to 62-1G, it is lifetime ban. And if we apply 63-1-G, it is five-year ban. <clears throat> Unless you say 62-1-G, Samula Baloch is not attracted to 62-1-G. <coughs> that could be one argument. So, uh, so it's, it's interesting uh, what my Lord has observed. Because if a person is dishonest, and if he is dishonest, and he is dishonest, and he is dishonest, and he is dishonest, and he is if he has been convicted and goes to jail, yeah. so he his and sins are expiated, ex, what is the word, expiated, yeah. right, and he is okay. Yeah. Now, if he is, for instance, acquitted yeah. or is not even prosecuted, then he is lifetime banned. So I find it difficult that a court of law which has convicted a person, meaning your guilt was established 
hundred percent. You are banned for only five years, and if your guilt has not been established, because every criminal case has two components: conviction and sentence. That's right. You can be convicted, and you can be sent on parole, or you can be convicted till the rising of the court, or whatever it is, or maybe not. Say for good conduct, we don't convict you this time. We don't sentence you this time. We just convict you. That's right. So that will be a lifetime ban, and the person will say, "Can you please send me to jail so I can contest elections again after five years?" Yes. Yeah, I would rather the rising of the court so I can just go back after come. five years. So I, I, then, the, see, certain things are very clear. You are a citizen of Pakistan. I mean, I find okay that it's pretty clear. There may be some gray areas where you may be holding two, three nationalities, or whatever the case is, or you may have given up, or Whatever, but generally age is a determinative factor. It's clear, and then we come to D, E, F, and G, which are vague, and they are overlapping as well because it says is of good character. Now, can any human being possibly say this on oath if he's truthful? If he's truthful. So it appears that as far as D, E, and G is concerned, there is no third-party declaration. You know, nobody is. Who's 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 actually saying that he doesn't have adequate knowledge of Islam? Who's saying that he's uh, said anything against the integrity of the country? So there's no third party, right? So how does the disqualification work on that election? And then it forgets about it, and then the next election he can contest. I mean, he once we found out that um, he doesn't have adequate knowledge of Islam. 20 years ago, and he missed the elections that time. Then he's now become a, a saint, perhaps. Alim. An alim. alim. And then he, what happens? Hafiz, Alim. So, <laughs> ek wo nahi aari. Lekin farak sirf ye hai ki F mein to ye ki ek declaration khadi hui hai, third party ki. So, jab tak ho khadi hui hai, wo chalta oh, rahega. That's what Samuela Beloch is saying. Oh, oh, Samuela Beloch actually turns on the declaration. Wo hua ye ki actually 18th amendment mein ye jo declaration by court of law lane ka purpose to ye tha ki wo returning officers jo hai na wo डिटर्मिन ना करते रहे या इस किस्म का एलिगेशन कोई और रैंडमली ना आकर लगा दे और ताकि ये जो डी ई e और जी के अंदर जो हो सकता है वो एफ में ना हो पाकिस्तान के बारे में बात स्पीच कर दी बस खत्म हो गई बात अब वो इलेक्शन नहीं लड़ सकता ये देखिए कुछ लोग होते हैं तो उन्होंने फाइव इयर्स कर लिए वो कहते यस आई सीन द लाइट अब इस्लाम में भी तौबा की गुंजाइश आखिर मिनट का क्या वो कह सकता है जी मुझे जैसे मालोड ने ऑब्जर्व किया कि मुझे इस्लाम के बारे में नहीं पता था अब मैंने सारे मात मान अब लाइफ टाइम बैन उसको कर दिया कि वो फिर उस शायद हिफ हाफिज बन गया हो सकता है आलिम बन गया हो सकता है आप और बेहतर और हम सबसे बेहतर कुरान शरीफ समझने लगा हो तो वो और वो लाइफ टाइम बैन में आ गया क्योंकि उसको 20 साल पहले या 10 साल पहले या 5 साल पहले इन चीजों के मुतालिक इल्म नहीं था उस समीला बलोच जो है इट एक्ट एज ए गली टीम वो कहते हैं कि जब आखिरी अपील में जब आप आएंगे तो बस उसके डिसीशन से पहले तो अगर आप रिपेंटेंस कर ले तो हो सकता है वरना वंस That happens, then there is no repentance. छोड़ा नहीं छोड़ा वन एटी फोर थ्री में तो वैसे ही नहीं होता बट अदरवाइज भी नहीं सुनने जरा समीला बलोच देखे इसमें इसमें असल बात यह है कि डिफरेंस हमने मालूम करना होगा सिक्सटी टू सिक्सटी थ्री ए में वट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन टू एज फार एज आई एम कंसर्न सिक्सटी टू इज नॉट गिविंग पावर टू डिसाइड अगेंस्ट अ पर्सन देखिए इसमें तो सिंपल ये इट इज डिपेंडेंट अपॉन 63 63 में जो जो कार्रवाई करेंगे वो दिखाएंगे 62 में वो कहेंगे यू आर यू आर नॉट क्वालिफाइड वेयर एज डिसक्वालिफिकेशन इज इन 63 अगर कोई शख्स सपोज कोई काम करता है कोई गलत काम करता है तो अगर आप जी और एज को पढ़ लें जी और एज वो डिटरमाइन करते हैं कि कोर्ट ऑफ लॉ से जब उसको कोई डिक्लेरेशन हो ये उस डिक्लेरेशन की बात हो रही है आई थिंक सो जी आइए इस पे बात करें कि ये ये 60 621f कहाँ पे पावर देते हैं कि आप इतने टाइम के लिए डिस्कालीफाई हो इतने टाइम के लिए वो तो सिर्फ ये बताते हैं कोई शख्स पेपर सबमिट हो रहे हैं उससे पहले बता दिए कि फ्लॉ कोर्ट से उसको सजा हुई लिहाजा पेपर खारिज दैट्स ऑल मैटर एंड अथॉरिटी डीलिंग विद दिस मैटर हैव नो पावर टू डिसाइड डिस्कालीफिकेशन पीरियड ऑफ दैट पर्सन वो डिस्कालीफिकेशन के पीरियड तो सिक्सटी ने बता दिया ये सजा जुर्म करोगे तो इतनी सजा होगी और उस जुर्म की सजा पूरी होने के दो साल बाद आप निकलेंगे तो फिर आप क्वालिफाई होंगे 
तो ये ये आप जो पहला सवाल जो आपसे किया कि डिफरेंस आप डिफरेंस जब बताएंगे तो खुद ब खुद पता चलेगा व्हाट इज 62 एंड व्हाट इज 63 तो सो सो इफ 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 62 1f इज जक्सटापोज्ड विद 63 1h H H and H both H moral turpitude H moral turpitude है because वो उसके साथ dishonesty etc वो उसके साथ है moral turpitude being very broad और वो examine हुआ similar बिलेब उसको अगर आप सामने रखें तो the consequence then if they are to be reconciled then the consequence is only one which is that uh, the timeline which is provided for the declaration in 63 1h must necessarily apply to the time so, to the declaration in 63 1f h mein agar conviction ho gayi because it attracted an offense and so it led to conviction then he can come back <laughs> but if it was lesser than uh, even a case where it could constitute an offense and so it, it could not be taken in a criminal case a simple declaration was given on the civil side that goes on unlimited ab yahi samajh nahi aati because otherwise then you i mean we also have to stay away from the concept of reading into the constitution for now that you have started reading in the so gpa so i was just well, <laughs> that, that is also a question so, so you must stop from reading for the <laughs> reading in yeah, so just okay. another aspect if you can attend to can you read d my lord again he is of good character and is not commonly known as one who violates islamic injunctions now please read f he is gracious righteous non profligate honest and amin there being no declaration to the contrary by a court of law now ye what does this mean there being no declaration to the contrary by a court of law in clause d and in clause e and in clause g yeah, no these sense. words are not mentioned that's right so either you say clause d e and g are redundant the meaningless clauses because the words there being no declaration either the same wording should have been followed and i can't at least i cannot understand the difference between good character and sagacious i mean good character is something different from sagacious is good character different from being righteous right is non profligate what does that even mean what does yeah. non profligate mean yeah. what does it mean who doesn't spend wastefully israf yeah to so good character yeah so if you are doing wazu and wasting water you become a profligate because as a hadith of the prophet that's right do not waste water and even if you're standing next to a flowing river so then he's a profligate so and then we go honest good character every good character person is an honest person i would imagine and amin i mean you know these are words which a muslim would never even dare utter in deference to the holy prophet that only he is and none of us are i mean that is humility and abject humility you will never say that otherwise why would you seek forgiveness for whenever someone dies please forgive his sins do we ever say he is entitled to jannat and allah taala grant him jannat he never committed a sin we don't even pray that for ourselves no honest person will say any of these things that he is sagacious righteous non profligate even the greatest saints in islam were scared when they were dying that they were scared of death because they were apprehensive of what may they be meeting in the hereafter so i don't know is this a generally a wish list kind of situation as opposed to and it because otherwise everybody can if somebody if i was filing a lamination paper and if someone says he's not of good character i would not even challenge it i said i'm sure i've done something wrong in my life maybe i've done it wrong yesterday so i don't know so uh, is i do this is if you're honest and you say right this person is right i'm i am not sagacious righteous non profligate honest i do not switch off the lights when i go out of a room i waste electricity i waste human uh, resources which the almighty provides so where does it end then you can it's you can just i can bring any case into that disqualify someone and i want to save someone i can also do the same thing that's why should such power vest in judges and who are themselves humans that's why uh, they want a greater test for parliamentarians than they have for themselves does this language find mention in the oath of office of a judge and 
I am not uh, profligate. Does it mention in the recommendations of a judge, or it says you have to be 45 years of age, practicing law for 10 years? It could be so, so we have a lower standard than parliamentarians. Why is this language and not reflected there as well? You know, let's accuse ourselves before we accuse anybody else what they are or what they are not. So uh, either we have a much lesser test, we can't, at least I would be very scared to meet this test, terrified to meet this test. <laughs> so uh, I, I, either we don't have a similar test, it's, so we have to read the co uh, constitution as a living whole and where the constitution has brought down the acts, it clearly says two years, five years, three years, two years, or it's factual, you're not a citizen, fine, that's very clear. There is no punishment here, but you're out. So without a punishment, you're out. There's no punishment. So, but suppose a person is a citizen of Pakistan, not a Pakistani citizen, but becomes a citizen of Pakistan later. Would he stand disqualified for life? Suppose he filed a nomination paper and he had another nationality or whatever, and he got disqualified. Is it disqualification for life? And then subsequently he said, okay, I've surrendered my US nationality and now I want to contest. So I don't know, you have to, we have to read it in a way that is meaningful. And we must bear in mind the conditionalities that were imposed to exclude people from this, I mean, the degree situation. Thankfully, it wasn't there when the Qaed was around yeah. because he would have been disqualified. That's right. You no, know, he wasn't a graduate. <laughs> so, amendment <laughs> come who? Amendment. It was our two ki art ki. Yes, in 2002. Who? Who? Kisne? Kisne ki amendment? This is Lord Lord. This is presidential order. Kya? Kya? Wo president khud in pe utar sakta the in mam tamam requirement puri kar sakta. But general military general Zayal Haq ki. Not that they degrees karte. Mr. Attorney General, the question is that uh, while we're looking at DE and G, which to my mind appears to be a guideline for the voters, the actual gatekeepers, and they might keep this in mind when they're voting because nobody can execute them and put anybody behind anything. So D, G, E, and um, G, to sir, guideline ho sakti hai voters ke liye, and that's never been agitated. The million dollar question is how do we look at the line? No declaration to the contrary by a court of law. What do we do with this? I mean, this is I the constitution. If I, may, if I think I may. my lords have raised the questions. Can we read the law on declarations? What is the law on declarations? Section 42 of the special yes, section 42 of the special relief act. I would Legal imagine director. is that the only declaration that has been indicated here? Is no other declaration. Or law hota declarations ka no, no, specific no, relief no, act. Only special relief act section 42. Okay. Legal character ke upar jo hai na, was, that is the only law. Declaratory suits are filed under 62 and section 42. Constitution mein Negative declaration concept, hai na? positive declaration is not the negative declaration. We have held in paternity cases that you cannot do negative declarations. In paternity, can we? Negative, positive. Negative, Negative, positive. Negative, Person right of any specific relief factor. attorney general ko de honest. please. Yes. Ji. sir. Um, I have it before me, Mr. Jilani's iPad is very helpful. Um, discretion of court as to declaration of status or right. Any person entitled to any legal character or to any right as to any property may institute a suit against any person denying or interested to deny his title to such character or right and the court may in its discretion make therein a declaration that he is so entitled and the plaintiff need not in such suit ask for any further relief. Bar to such declaration, provided that no court shall make any such declaration where the plaintiff being able to seek further relief than a mere declaration of title commits to do so. By the court to what is understood by court, a civil court? Yes. Under section 9 
Or is it a constitutional court? No, this is this is it's it's a civil court which where where, where which can uh, where evidence can be led, witnesses can be examined, where a burden of proof is discharged, and then there is an opportunity of rebuttal. Suppose in a case where I've done so even. We observe hearing a civil petition for leave to appeal or a appeal that the appellant had dishonestly filed a suit. Suppose we hold that and we've held so and impose costs on him. Will that constitute a declaration of a court of law in terms of Article 62.1F? My respectful submission is no, sir. Why? Because you are not a court where that particular issue sure. is actually conclusively determined through a trial. So we could observe in other cases, we could say in a criminal case that I don't believe this witness he is a liar. And that witness will then be struck by 62.1F because it's a declaration of a court of law. And in a judgment in a criminal case, not he was not an accused there, but he was a witness. And the court says, I don't trust this witness. He is, he, 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 I found him to lie. My Lord, so it's, you know, then you can bring out every case. We may make an observation against a lawyer. He misled the court, for instance. Uh, sometimes we do that. My Lord, if I free, free, and then if the I lawyer may. contests election, the person will say, you have held that he misled the court. He is, of course, sir. How can you allow him now to contest an election? He's banned for life. <laughs> My Lord, now, uh, Ji Saab, one thing or see, the declaratory judgments that the Supreme Court has provided, that Article 184, sub Article 1, mein, those declaratory judgments are in the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court, which is written in the Supreme Court, that the Supreme Court shall pronounce declaratory judgment. Besides declaratory judgment 184 and 185, it is written in the Supreme Court. No, 184, 3 is uh, not mere declaration. I mean, it's 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 not mere declaration
ठीक हो गया बट आर यू सेइंग दैट द प्रिंसिपल सेटल इन सेमिला पे लोश यू एग्री विद इट नो दैट आई एम आई डोंट एग्री हां तो आई आई वांट टू से दैट देयर इज सम कंडीशंस फॉर द ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ स्टेट डिसाइसिव प्रिंसिपल कि कब वो जजमेंट जो है वो रिविजिट हो सकती है और क्या वो आप आप बार-बार वही चीज रिपीट ना करें ना आप सीधी बात हमसे कर नहीं रहे हैं Okay. जजमेंट को छोड़ दीजिए दो मिनट के लिए लॉ को भी छोड़ दीजिए हम सिर्फ आपकी राय मालूम करना चाह रहे हैं आप लाइफ टाइम डिस्कालीफिकेशन को सब एफ सपोर्ट कर रहे हैं या नहीं कर रहे हैं कुछ हाँ या ना तो कर रहे हैं मैं, मैं नहीं सपोर्ट कर रहा लेकिन नहीं कर रहे हैं अच्छा हम सुनना चाहते हैं कि कौन सपोर्ट कर रहा है एक सेकंड है एक सेकंड है जो है ना सुनेंगे आपकी वक्त पे कानूनी बात करेंगे तो करिए आ जाए बताइए एक सेकंड दैट इज सीएम मिस्टर समीला बलोच द पर्सन हिमसेल्फ जी सनाउल्ला बलोच रही शुक्रिया मोजर साहबान ये आपका ये केस है जी सर ये मेरा ही केस है तो लिखा है समयुल्ला बलोच सर समयुल्ला बलोच इज माई ब्रादर एंड अब्दुल करीम नौशरवानी आई एम द एग्रीव पर्सन बिकॉज आई कंटेस्टेड इलेक्शन अगेंस्ट समयुल्ला बलोच कहा है अब्दुल करीम नौशरवानी सर इज माई ब्रादर बिकॉज द केस इज माइन सो आप उनके अटर्नी है आप कैसे आप पेश हुए थे क्या जी हाँ मैं पेश हुआ हूँ सर बिकॉज मैं एग्रीव पार्टी हूँ जो मैंने अच्छा दो हजार दो के बाद जब इलेक्शन हुए मैं उसकी तफसी में बात तफसी ना बता दे ना आप बता दें किस ग्राउंड पे आप करना चाहते हैं ग्राउंड पे सर ग्राउंड ये है कि जो कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल जो प्रिंसिपल है उसके तहत सुप्रीम जो जुडिशल सुप्रीमेसी है उसको मद्देनजर रखते हुए ये ये ऐसी बातें ना करें अदालत में जुडिशल सुप्रेमेसी क्या चीज होती है मैं सर अगर आप की नहीं ऐसी बातें ना करें हमसे कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल सुप्रेमेसी की बात सुनी थी हमने अब आप जुडिशियल सुप्रेमेसी का मैंने कॉन्सेप्ट नहीं सुना है सर ये जो नहीं देखिए कानूनी बात करें ना ये ऐसी बातें ना करें सर ये जो आर्टिकल 62 और 63 है ये कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन में गुजश्ता पचास साल से और बिलखसूस अठारहवीं तरमीम के बाद इसमें कुछ तरामीम हुई लेकिन पर्टिकुलरली सिक्सटी टू वन एफ में तरामीम नहीं की गई ये टोटल पांच सफात पर मुश्तमिल कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन के अंदर बहुत क्लियरली इंट्री और एग्जिट पॉइंट दिए गए हैं अक् के नुमाइंदगी के लिए इख्तियार के लिए कहने का मकसद ये है सर जब ये दो हजार तेरह के बाद से जब ये अगर आप कह रहे हैं ना पचास साल से ये स्टेच्यूट बुक्स पे है तो पहले क्यों नहीं कभी कोई डिस्कालीफाई हुआ मैं, मैं इस पे आ रहा हूँ सर बात ये है कि सर ये जो है 2002 के बाद से जेर बहस आया ये 20 साल से सर सुप्रीम कोर्ट और बलोचिस्तान हाई कोर्ट और दीगर कोर्ट्स में ये तफसील के साथ ये जेर बहस रहा है मौजूद और इसमें सिक्सटी और सिक्सटी की बहुत वो क्लियरली केयरफुली मेटिकुलसली जो है सर इसकी तशरी की गई है मुख्तलि मेटिकुलसली ऐसे तो ना बातें करें ना आप सर मैं पॉइंट पे आ जाए पॉइंट पे आता हूँ तो सर जब एक कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन के अंदर जब सिक्सटी थ्री की जब बात की जा रही है कि वहां पांच साल का तयन किया गया है क्यों सिक्सटी टू वन एफ में नहीं किया गया उसकी बुनियादी वजह यह है सर जब मैं एज ए मेंबर पार्लियामेंट में जाता हूँ जब डिक्लेशन देता हूँ वो ओथ है मैं ओथ में ये कहता हूँ कि मैं शहरी हूँ मैंने बी ए पास किया है मेरी उम्र 25 साल है ये जब मेरे खिलाफ जिस शख्स ने कंटेस्ट किया था जब मैंने उसको कंटेस्ट किया कोर्ट में उसकी उम्र 24 साल थी कलेक्शन में क्योंकि उसके पास वालिद के पास बीए की क्वालिफिकेशन नहीं थी तो उसका क्या हुआ कि उसमें पांच छ मिस रिप्रेजेंटेशन की उसमें फ्रॉडरी की और जो डिग्री है इस जगह ही सवाल है आपसे आप ये कह रहे हैं ना कि ये जो डिक्लेरेशन जो हमें समझ नहीं आ रही सिचुएशन की वो ये है कि मैक्सिमम झूठ बोला ना उसने फॉर्म में झूठ बोल दिया मिस डिक्लेरेशन कर तो झूठ की सजा ये है कि सारी उम्र के लिए इलेक्शन प्रोसेस से आउट हो गया ये लिखा हुआ है दूसरी तरफ हम पढ़ते हैं तो अगर कत्ल भी कर दिया ट्रीजन भी कर दिया तो फिर भी कुछ टाइम गुजरेगा तो वापस आ सकता है ये बात रिकनसाइल नहीं हो रही सर ये जो केस आपका समूला बलोच आपको सजा होता है तो वो एक स्टेगमा है उसके माथे पे एक दाग लग जाता है वो दो से चार साल कैद का गुजारता है पूरे माशरे में उसकी फैमिली सफर करती है फाइनेंशियल सफर करता है मॉरली सफर करता है उसकी जारी सोसाइटी में उसकी अहमियत और हैसियत कम हो जाती है उसके बाद जब वो निकलता है तो उसके बाद इजाजत है कि पांच साल के बाद वो जाए अगर उसके पास गुंजाइश है वो आम के पास जाए लेकिन इसमें सर जब आप इंट्री पॉइंट पे ही झूठ बोलते हैं जब आप दाखिले के वक्त नहीं जाते आपने कहा देखिए एक पॉइंट लेते हैं चौबीस साल का था आपने कहा कि उस वक्त वो पच्चीस साल का नहीं था चौबीस साल का था सिर्फ एक ही पॉइंट होता उसके डेक्लरेशन पे आपने उसको चैलेंज कर दिया वो प्रूव हो गया कि चौबीस साल का है 
آپ کی رائے میں وہ فار لائف ڈس کوالیفائی ہو جائے گا پھر وہ الیکشن کنٹیسٹ نہیں کر سکتا از اٹ یور پوائنٹ ود یور آنریبل پرمیشن سر اب وجہ کیا ہوئی اس وقت پہلے یہ پہلے یہ یہ میری یہ میری وجہ یہی پوائنٹ ہے اپ سر میری یہ پوائنٹ اس وقت اس لیے سنی جب نہیں گئی وہ شخص داخل ہو گیا اس نے وہ چیک بیریئر کراس کر لیا وہ جھوٹ کے باوجود وہ بلوچستان میں وزیر داخلہ بنا جو ابھی سے پہلے کیس پھر ذاتیات پہ نہ جائیے نہیں نہیں سر ہم ذاتیات کو چھوڑ دیجیے ہم آئینی نکتے کی بات کر رہے ہیں ہو سکتا ہے بہت برا آدمی ہے ہم اس میں نہیں جانا چاہتے ہیں تو آپ ذاتیات کو چھوڑ دیجیے آئین کی بات کریں آپ پارلیمنٹیرین ہیں نا ہم ذاتیات پہ بہت سکتا ہے اچھا آدمی برا آدمی وہ ہمارے سامنے بحث نہیں ہم نے کریں گے کیونکہ ہم ایک جنرل پرنسپل تعین کرنا چاہ رہے ہیں اب جنرل اللہ بلوچ صاحب دیکھیں میں آپ کو بتا رہا ہوں جو ہمارے لیے کمپیریزن میں پرابلم آ رہی ہے نا ایک طرف سکسٹی تھری اے میں آپ جتنا مرضی کرائم کر دیں آپ کچھ عرصہ سزا کاٹیں پانچ سال گزاریں تو واپس آ جائیں ہمیں یہ پرابلم ہو رہی ہے کہ سول ڈیکلریشن میں سزا نہیں ہے کوئی سزا تو اس نے نہیں کاٹی سوا یہ سزا اس نے کاٹی کہ وہ والا الیکشن مس ہو گیا اس کا اگلے الیکشن میں تو وہ آ سکے نا اب یہ کہنا کہ اگلے الیکشن میں بھی نہیں آئے گا کبھی بھی نہیں آئے گا یہ ہمیں سمجھ نہیں آ رہی کہ سول اس نے جھوٹ بولا جھوٹ کی سزا آپ نے دی کہ تم اس نامینیشن پیپر ریجیکٹ ہو گئے تمہارے تم نے الیکشن نہیں لڑا سزا مل گئی نا جو کرمنل سائٹ پہ اس کو ویسے سزا مل رہی سول سائٹ پہ یہ سزا ہو گئی اب آگے چلے نا اب وہ کیا اس نے مجھے ایک جھوٹ بول دیا مس ڈیکلیریشن کر دی اب وہ ساری عمر کیسے دوسری طرف پھر تو ہو نا آئین میں ہر جگہ لمیٹیشن ہے ٹائم کی اسٹوری ہر جگہ تو پھر اس جگہ بھی تو کچھ ہونی چاہیے نا میں حق میں ہوں کہ ٹو تھرٹی ٹو ابھی جو جون میں میں اس حق کی بات چھوڑ دینا اگر دیکھیں اچھا ایکچولی وی آئی ایم اسپوٹنگ از ایٹ مختوم علی خان کین وی ریکویسٹ یو ٹو since mr mahdoom ali khan has written on the constitution i don't know if he's involved in any case before us are you in these matters huh yes i don't which case are you in i have filed a cma 6 of 2024 uh, for whom in favor of disqualification or lifetime or not my lord not in favor are you not in who, who, why who have you filed it for for mr jahangir khan tareen my lord Okay, now one thing which nobody has attended to yet, at least one way of interpreting the constitution is what the original constitution said. And this constitution has been, I don't know what's the correct word, changed or ravaged from time to time, what you want to use it. Can we read the original constitution as it was enacted in 1973 My Lord. and see what the constitution then said <laughs> my lord uh, i will read that provision to your yes, lordship right. then would you like to do it or should we ask the attorney general to do so as your lordship pleases the history is so we were thinking of appointing you as a micus but you are representing a party so anyways let's uh, as your lordship ji nahi padhein 62 but, but the, do you have the original constitution yes my lord i have and the history is traced in samuel baloch no no uh, uh, we want to read the actual text yes, my lord. i'll take uh, text is there 85 yeah, yeah. they then go پاکستان B is in the case of the National Assembly not less than 25 years of age and is enrolled as a voter in any electoral roll for the election to that assembly. C is in the case of the Senate not less than 30 years of age and is enrolled as a voter in any area in a province or as the case may be the federal capital or the federally administered tribal areas from where he seeks membership. and d he possesses such other qualifications as may be prescribed by act of parliament so these troublesome provisions were not there no my lord when did they come into my lord by presidential order number 14 of 1985 which is also called the revival of the constitution order this is general zia yeah. general zia when the martial law was coming to an end and partyless elections were soon to is it end. ironic that the person who violates the constitution of the uh, of the country puts in these conditions i find that a bit troublesome isn't it yes he he after d he was he of good character if he violates the oath that he took to uphold and protect the constitution and he destroys the constitution 
it's very ironic for me that he inserts a good character, knowledge of Islamic teachings. I wonder which knowledge of Islamic teaching mandates judges to be sent home because they don't swear an oath of fealty to the martial law administrator. What is your view on that? My Lord, these are with great respect all these provisions which have been added by the RCO or the Presidential Order 14. They are, Was he non-profligate? My Lord, these are matters which I would no, say... Wait, yeah, we want your answer on this. My Lord, these are matters for divine judgment. It is, be, it is. These are matters for divine judgment. It's you mean to say matter of treason is for divine judgment? My Lord, no. And the treason is not an issue. But if we come to treason, then in so person, uh, martial law is, is admitted. Is, yes, is, yes. If it comes to an act of treason, then in that particular oh, case, you think he committed treason or not? My Lord. In, uh, in your lordship is talking of 1977. You're talking about yes. Your Lordship will then have to examine it. You know, we are asking your opinion. My Lord, I would be bound by the judgment of this Honourable. We are Court. asking your opinion. My opinion is different. But no, the judgment of this Honourable... Share your opinion with us. The judgment of this Honourable Court in Begum Nusrat Bhutto's case my, takes a different view. My Lord, my opinion... Let's read the rest of the 63. 63. So this was D. Tha. There was no present D, present E, present F and present G. Yes, my lord. The D... The, uh, and 63 was also pretty uh, succinct. Yes, it was, my lord. Six, 63 was also very limited. Yes, sir. I'm going to put the case. Case use me on the same time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Ji, my Lord, 63, a person shall be disqualified from being elected or chosen as and from being a member of parliament if A, he is of unsound mind and has been so declared by a competent court or B, he is an undischarged insolvent or C, he ceases to be a citizen of Pakistan or requires the citizenship of a foreign state or D, he holds any office of profit in the service of Pakistan other than an office declared by law not to disqualify its holder or E, if he is so disqualified by act of parliament. So it was pretty straightforward and simple. It was. And RCO kind of mauled the constitution. Yes. RCO changed it and changed it in two respects. It brought in these qualifications and added a whole host of disqualifications as well. By a person who was of sagacious, righteous, non-profligate, honest and good character. Yes. Yes. But, but the point is 18th Amendment stamped on it. You see, my Lord, the 8th Amendment stamped on it. No, no, they came. Uh, and, uh, uh, and then 18th Mr. Amendment stamped. Mr. Maghdoum Ali Khan, at least now I will speak for myself, I don't know. Wherever there are, this is one way of interpreting the constitution, and I've held it in a judgment or two, that wherever there is problem areas or difference of opinion or two interpretations possible, at least I've chosen the one interpretation which found mentioned in the original pristine constitution chosen by the directly elected representatives of the people and not martial law administrators. Why are you so scared of martial law administrators to utter these words, Mr. Maghdoum Ali Khan? My Lord, may I, may I submit that this is also the jurisprudence of this court. In Al-Jihad case, Mr. Justice Ajmal Mia took the view that if there is a conflict or tension between two provisions of the constitution, one which was enacted at a time when the constitution was in abeyance and other at the time when the constitution was in full force, it is the latter which will then prevail. And that view has been reiterated in Samyullah Baloch, though the principles drawn from it thereafter are different. So what your Lordship is observing. So where is it mentioned in Samyullah Baloch? My Lord, in, in the Samyullah Baloch case itself. No, I, I, I just want to read that part. Yes, my Lord. Your Lordship will see the constitutional principle 
is, is identified in the Samyullah Baloch case itself at page 435. Page 435. At this point that you are saying? Yes, yes. This point is there on page 435. This is PLD 2018 Supreme Court 405. Which paragraph are you reading? Paragraph 22. If your lordship will see... There are number of judgments cited and then it says referenced by the President PLD's 1957 Supreme Court 219 at 235. As such, the Constitution must be interpreted as a whole because it is an organic document that is meant to apply to the changing circumstances of time and space. Consequently, each provision of Constitution a part thereof has purpose, meaning and integral place that must be understood, acknowledged and applied harmoniously. It is only when a conflict between two provisions of the Constitution is irreconcilable and one of such provisions was inserted when the Constitution was held in abeyance, then the provision which was made part of the Constitution during the period of its abeyance would yield. But would it apply because it, after the 18th Amendment having been having stamping it, so it's not really, that was a democratic dispensation at that time. My Lord, it was, but your Lordships prior to this also in Al-Jihad's case, took the view that in spite of the fact that whatever General Zia had done had been validated to a large extent by the Eighth Amendment to the Constitution, this Honorable Court took the view that, and that was in particular, my Lord, in relation to a provision where a judge of this honor, of the High Court declined to go to the Federal Sharia Court and was, as a result, sent home. Their Lordship took the view, particularly Mr. Justice Ajmal Mia, that this provision was inserted at a time when the country was going through a peace period of constitutional abeyance. No doubt it was validated by the Eighth Amendment, but if when we examine it and juxtapose it with other provisions relating to judiciary, this having been added at the time cannot be allowed to hold sway, and that is why their Lordships held that a judge of the High Court cannot be sent to the Federal Sharia Court against his will, and if he refuses, will not cease to hold the office of a judge of the High Court. So, in spite of that, this has been the jurisprudence of this Honorable Court, that in spite of the validation... Mr. Maghdoum Ali Khan, but would you put validation at par with an original enactment which has been thought about, carefully considered by every member of parliament. A validation was also a bitter pill for the parliamentarians to swallow. If you don't validate, I continue. So it may be that, okay, we are getting something, is better than nothing, let's at least get on with it. But we are now faced with a problem. So simple validation, when the original constitution said something else, if there are two possible ways to interpret something, and more so when the what has been added is very ambiguous. It, I don't know why these vague words were introduced. You could have simply said A, B, C, D, like every other thing is factual. Either it's a yes or it's a no. Are you all go of good character? Please don't answer this question. But which person would say this? I mean, it would be a very audacious person who would say, I'm every, I'm honest, I mean, and everything. And then probably he will be making other claims which will be totally uh, not permissible. So simple validation is a bitter pill which has been swallowed from time to time to get democracy back on the rails would you not agree with that since you are a, we consider you a constitutional expert to consider validation at par with a constitutional provision or it has to be re read in the context of, because this judgment also says in space and time, the space then was a dictatorship. Either you continue another 10 years of a dictator or get some sort of a diluted form of democracy that get us back on the rails, whichever is better. So probably the parliamentarians, we should not always condemn the parliamentarians. We should see the difficult circumstances that they work under. I mean, they, they, they are, we should respect them. And what would you have done? Let's put yourself in the position of parliament, uh, make yourself a parliamentarian then, that you would 
okay, validate something which you may not be very happy with, but at least get the business back on track. How would you personally attend to it? My Lord, my respectful submission is that though the earlier two judgments which I have just identified by this Honorable Court do not put it in the terms that your Lordship has, but that was probably at the back of their mind when they said that a amendment made during the period of constitutional abeyance if it is in conflict with or cannot be reconciled with the provision originally enacted in the Constitution, then the latter will prevail. So obviously this Honorable Court has not treated the validation at the same level as the original Constitution, recognizing all the difficulties which your Lordship have articulated, but not articulating them in this particular manner. Otherwise, my Lord, if any amendment made to the constitution eventually when made stands on the same plane as any other constitutional provision but your lordships have held that we will distinguish between constitutional provisions made during a period of constitutional so, Mr. Mr. what's your main argument is this your main stay of your argument my lord my my main argument in this particular case would be that in so far as when your lordship examines article 62 and 63 because some of these amendments, as your Lordship has just now noticed, came in at the same time, there is a relationship between the two. And with great respect to this extent that Samuel Baloch says that 62 and 63 have to be looked at through different lenses, it is with great respect incorrectly decided. Because when your Lordship looks at 62 and 63 and the amendments came about, at the same time, 62F, which your Lordship is looking in particular, which says he's sagacious, righteous, non-profligate, honest, and I mean there being no declaration to the contrary by a court of law, and your Lordship examines it with 63-1H, he has been con on conviction for any offense involving moral turpitude, sentenced to imprisonment for a term of not less than two years, unless a period of five years has elapsed since his release. They are to be read together. I mean, that is dependent upon 62 is dependent upon 63. 63, and I would go to the extent of saying that when your Lordship looks at G, for instance, he has not after the establishment of Pakistan worked against the integrity of the country or opposed the ideology of Pakistan. It has to be related to H, which says he has been on conviction for any offense involving moral... So what does that mean? I mean, where, where does that leave these provisions 62? My Lord, I, the effect? My, my submission would be that unless there is a conviction, and that would be the declaration I would be seeing, not... So, so, so what would be... What are these... They go. My Lord, if just, there is no conviction, then in the case of... D, F, E, and G, for example. My Lord, D and E and F probably all will have to be related to H, 63 by H. F actually talks about a declaration. D, E, and G don't. They could D, be, one could argue that because there is no third party declaration, we can go into conviction area. But well, where do we take the declaration part? My Lord, declaration, now if your Lordship looks at it in terms of section. Some, one thing which immediately comes to mind is section 42 of the Specific Obviously, Relief Act, yes. which talks about declaration of a legal, legal character. character. Now, this cannot be that kind of a declaration because as your lordships have repeatedly observed, a negative declaration is impossible to obtain. Then your lordship... Sometimes permissible, negative declaration is, is permissible sometime in some events that yes. can be granted by yes. the court. It there has been some revisitation, or or some revisitation of Alvi Sons, mm. but otherwise that remains good law. Then if your Lordship looks at 199, that also is talking of declarations being made by this Honorable Court, but that's in a completely different context. Mm -hmm. That is only so then what do you make out of this declaration for a court of law? My Lord, I would say that the term is not used specifically in the section 42 sense of the term. Maybe it's a constitutional declaration. It's a constitutional declaration and that constitu the declaration which the constitution is envisaging is 
there has been a conviction already under 631H. And then there is this gateway. He cannot file his papers before the returning officer because at that time, the returning officer may refuse to accept it. But the anomaly, anomaly which arises when your lordship looks at 631H in particular and, and G and H both, actually, when your lordship looks at it, for instance, at H, he has been on conviction for any offense involving moral turpitude sentenced to imprisonment for a term of not less than two years unless a period of five years has elapsed since his release. So even a conviction which is followed by a sentence of one year, 11 months does not lead to disqualification even of one day. Fair enough. So that's so, understood. So th therefore the connection which Samyullah Baloch me makes between a person being an ex-convict suffering all his life, the stigma that he's a convict is really not what 631H is all about. 631H is all about sentencing. If the person has been convicted and sentenced till the rising of the court, he's not disqualified at all. No, but there is a difference, you see, with the opening paragraph of section 62 and 63. My Lord, they need yes. to be read yes. and harmonized. A person shall not be qualified to be elected or chosen. I mean, if you will read 63, a person shall be disqualified from being elected or chosen. So, well, wo jo usme season likhi hai, wo after conviction hai, ke agar koi convict ho gaya hai, uski saza khatam ho gai hai, to is itne period ke baad wo election lad sakta hai. To be elected and from being elected. This well, is what he... Correct. But yes. if your lordship may graciously be pleased to look at clause 2 of 62, these words are used very loosely. The disqualification specified in paragraph D and E doesn't talk about qualifications. So article 62. But both are the different two. situation. No, no. My Lord, Article 62, Ooh, huh. clause 2, mm. is talking of disqualifications under 62. It's not talking of qualifications. So this is very loose language which has been used. Practically interchangeable. Interchangeable language. Because so, uh, one question which I my have. D E My does not have the wording there being no declaration to the contrary by a court of law. My Lord, yes. When does D E and G kick in? How can they ever kick in actually in any court of law? They cannot kick in. Or they're meaningless words. My Lord. They're uh, just guidelines. Perhaps. They are exhortatory perhaps for the guidance of the electorate that watch out for candidates. So, so like first of all you are saying that they are of no uh, uh, there are no Can't consequences be. which follow D, E, and F. Can't D, E, and Can't G. They, they will, my lord, D, E, but and ideally, the same wording should have been used, there being no declaration to the contrary by a court of law in D, in E, and in G. My lord, this, uh, this, these wordings are only find mentioned in F. In this, my lord, these were added in F under the 18th amendment, these words were originally not there. And the reason for adding it appears to be, as the Attorney General identified, that under F, returning officers had started disqualifying people by saying, Aap chotha kalma zara suna dije. Aap chotha kalma zara suna dije. Is tarah ki cheeze. They can still do that in E. They can. They very much can. That's the problem, you see. What we don't understand is D, E, G are there. And what do we... They're not executable as such. How how could we... I mean, I... I myself read them as, as uh, for the gatekeepers, as the voters, and maybe they keep that in mind, not vote because it's a subjective decision, my lord, yes. but cannot be enforced in a court of law. My lord, that is what in the uh, case of Isa Khan Khakwani, one of the learned judges, as my lord, Mr. Justice Faiz Isa identified in Sheikh Rashid's case, took the view that no disqualification can really take place over here. These these are very open-ended words. And your lordship points it out 
in your uh, dissenting opinion in Sheikh Sheikh's case, where your lordship identifies the seven questions which are to be dealt with by the court, because that's. But Mr. Mahdoud, the problem is that I am facing is you can't attribute redundancy to the constitution, my lord, yes, or to any law for that matter. And then secondly, you can't read into the constitution. So my the lord. time frame. Suppose if one were to say that this just this F applies for that election, that particular election which the nomination papers are rejected, and it ends. Now that's not written. So how, I mean, that's the worry that I have. How do we read in a time frame into it? Either we read them with 63 and create a larger timeline concept. How, how does it work? Or go on the invalid, validation point? Uh, if I mean, in other words, what my learned brother has just said, uh, what I've understood from your submission is what you are saying, Samula Baloch does not accord with the constitution. That's the submission. That's one, that's your argument. Can we not say that Samuel Baloch for its time was good, valid judgment? However, since the lacuna has now been pro provided by parliament and they've given a five year time limit, both can be reconciled. That was good then. And now five years is, if your five years have expired, would you agree with that or you would not agree with no, that? I would absolutely agree with that, my lord. My submission is that Samula Baloj was enacted, uh, was uh, decided at a time when we didn't have this newly amended law. At that time, the law did not, and there was no timeline set. The Samula Baloj case was decided in a particular manner. The legislature has now filled that gap. In Samula Baloj, it was observed that there is a declaration until such time that the declaration stands, then the person would remain disqualified or will not be qualified. Now the legislation says that the period of such a declaration will not go beyond five years. five years. Okay, now I will ask you the supplementary question. And I knew you would come here. Thank you. Now can I put it to you that Section 232.2 is unconstitutional? Can I put this to you or not? My Lord, uh, that is a very valid question. Of course, your Lordship can put any question. There's no, no, yes. I, I, My Lord, because one view can be, which, and which is probably, the, not probably, in my opinion, definitely the correct view, that where this honorable court has interpreted a provision of the Constitution and made a declaration about a provision of the Constitution, then on the doctrine of legislative repeal, that constitutional interpretation can only be undone by an amendment to the constitution. And that brings us to the question that how could the constitution be controlled by a sub-constitutional legislation? The constitution is talking about a declaration gives no time frame. Could we, through an act of parliament, start adding things to the constitution? We can't do that. My lord, I would say that the declaration made by the parliament is in consonance with Article 63 1H of the Constitution, which provides a time frame for the kind of offenses which will fall under F. Because well, that involves conviction, that's a criminal case. But if you look at 63 P, 1, 1 P or whatever it is, the yes, P, ma the last yes, one. Yes, ma'am. The like, Constitution itself allows that through an act of parliament you can regulate yes, this provision. And wherever it's so required, it's given. So, uh, yeah, just taking it a little more, uh, suppose, let's imagine Samula Baloch was not decided. And we are deciding it today. My Lord. Just for the sake of uh, to take the argument a bit forward, and we, I mean, let's assume everyone agrees with me, and we say since 62.1f does not provide a time limitation for disqualification, therefore let us be guided by other provisions of the Constitution, including 63.1h and g, where it provides for. Uh, uh, treason, five-year disqualification. So let us read, let this disqualification be for five years. Is this sound reasoning or not? My Lord, it is because your Lordship is then virtually interpreting the two provisions together. 
when your lordship interprets so at the end of the day it depends on what is in my mind are you understanding yes ma'am is the constitution so malleable that i can do whatever i want to with it my lord if 62 63 1 h was not there let us assume there was only 62 1 f and if the 18th amendment had not added the words which have been added which is declaration to the contrary by a court of law then 62 1f would have been a provision which really provided no timeline and if a person was declared not to be qualified under 62 1f then the question would be for how long my lord the question can be for that term that he has been elected or he can be reelected immediately my lord for instance the only other constitution that i have been come across which is a provision similar to that of pakistan where you cannot be elected to the parliament if you are the citizen or have acquired the citizenship of another country is that of australia in the and the australian high court has dealt with this issue no other constitution that i am aware of deals american with. constitution you have to be an american you have to be an american citizen but it does not say like our my lord 631 c says what acquires the citizenship of a foreign state so a dual citizenship over here disqualifies in the australian constitution also a dual citizenship disqualified but the lordships over there have taken the view that if the person then steps down abandons that citizenship he can c- come back in tomorrow again and there they have also taken the view that if he has applied for his citizenship to be renounced then the constitution of our country will not be contingent on the delay or speed of the legal processes in another country he has do- done the best he can and therefore they have said he can continue to be in uh, office why were you disqualified my lord why have you been disqualified from the petitioner the, the petitioner yes petitioner was the you all your client my lord my Sorry. client yes i was coming to that my lord he has been disqualified on the ground that he had created a trust for, for the property called hyde house and his defense was that hyde house was a trust the oh, mis declaration in the nomination form is that the allegation yes but his case was that there was no mis declaration you know that's a different thing but i yes. just want to know what was the reason so, so in all these cases if you look at all these cases that were where 621f was invoked the 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 misdemeanor is a uh, uh, mis declaration or well, maybe they have not given mis declaration generically would be it and mis declaration in the worst form taken could be brought into age worst form moral ter- i mean kahi ho sakta hai innocently bhi ho lekin chale worst form mein le le it is moral turpitude and that provides for 2 years plus 5 years so that's 7 years so even if suppose a person did not get convicted because there was no case filed worst to worst if the case was there he would be out in 7 years so 7 years period could be easily read into uh, the f clause because that's the only natural corollary i mean it doesn't make sense yes. otherwise yes yes my lord and again would there be any any incident coming out of f which would will go out of h my lord the wala apne nahi case banaya suppose mr declaration uske khilaf kisi ne koi criminal case hi nahi kiya agar ho jata to wo 2 saal wo hota aur fir uske baad 5 saal hota yahi hai na is there any situation in f which would go outside h a lot not that i can think of uh, no that's do you think the words in f it says it doesn't end by a country by a court it says court of law my lord yes. is a court of law different from a constitutional court because it could have stopped at the word court so i just want to know does it the of law add anything or doesn't add anything my lord of law adds in the sense that probably the returning officer will not have this power when the returning officer is not a court i'm yes, just thinking in not. terms of section 9 courts under the cpc are these court of law section 9 courts or court of law because it should have said it could have ended by saying by any court my lord over uh, here are we distinguishing between the constitutional court and a civil court of competent jurisdiction or we are not this, it's meaningless uh, irrelevant this honorable court and your lordship yourself have held that over here the word court of law means a court of plenary jurisdiction 
in Panama 1, mm. which was not subsequently followed in Panama 3. This honorable court. What do you mean by Panama 1 and Panama, Panama 1, my lord, was the first case with, which was decided 3 to 2. And Mr. Justice Ijaz Abdul Khan, writing for the majority, said that court over here means a court of plenary jurisdiction. Meaning Section 9 court. Section 9 court, a court which will take evidence, which will examine the issues where a trial takes place. Or it could be civil or criminal. He, he doesn't make that distinction. And I would I would submit that if your lordship have to... Then how did that view change? In, without mentioning what they have done in, in Panama 2 and Panama 3. This, is it referred to Panama 1 and Panama 2 and 3, this aspect? No, my lord. Your lordship notices that in your lordship's judgment in Sheikh Rashid's case. Actually, that was not a judgment. It raised a number of questions. Yes, it raised a number of questions. Yes. But your lordship will see that even after Samyullah Baloch, different tests have been applied. The author judge of Samyullah Baloch was also the chief justice of Pakistan in Faisal Wabda's case and has taken a different view without where is, any reference to where Samyullah is, Where is that view? My lord, that is re reported. My lord, that is Mohammed Faisal Wabda versus Election Commission of Pakistan and others. My lord, this is 2023 SCMR 370. My lord, 370. My lord, I have put these cases Short together order. in a bundle for ease of reference of your lordship. And this is the other one. Sir, when you have all cases, I have to say, sir, you have to say, 62-1 FP judgment. Sir, you have to say, you have to say, yes, sir, it is the last tab. It is tab 20. So you are a member of this. Yes. My, my lord is one of the members. Yes. His lordship is one of the members. Yeah, well, said as if it was a, huh? something wrong. <laughs> Can you read the relevant portion? My lord, yes. Paragraph 4. It's a two-page judgment, really. Uh, G. Paragraph 4, page 373. The petitioner states before the court that he regrets his claim of renunciation of the U.S. nationality at the time of filing his nomination papers for the election of NA249 Karachi on 7 6 2018. He further states he had then initiated a process for such renunciation, but the certificate of loss of nationality of the U.S. was issued to him on 25th June 2018. He admitted that he was disqualified from contesting the election under Article 6131C of the Constitution on the date when he had filed his nomination papers for the election of NA249 Karachi, and that his affidavit filed in the nom with the nomination paper thus contained an erroneous statement which he regrets in order to demonstrate his good faith in remorse for his mistake he undertakes that he will resign from the office of the member of the senate to which he was elected in view of the said statement and undertaking of the petitioner the we, are the, we are of the opinion that we need not proceed further in the matter in the peculiar facts and circumstances of the case and if your lordship may see the last sentence which is the last three lines it is clarified that the petitioner shall not be considered disqualified in any subsequent election on the basis of the instant. The repentance is that period, that particular election. Yes. And so, but There's this is after he enjoyed the full tenure of the Senate. Yes. Yes, and then he resigned. He, he resigned. But one thing is, Samula Baloch, mein, paragraph 6, mein, the concept of repentance is mentioned. Yes, my lord. But I don't find a finding on it then. The no, argument no. of counsel finds mention on repentance. My lord, yes. But then it is, though the judgment talks about Islamic injunctions, this concept is not discussed unless I've missed it. No, it is not discussed, my lord. That judgment is also on tab 7 of this very bundle. So are you repentant? So, Mr. Magdum, we can look at it like this, you see. Are you repentant or you claim you've done no wrong? My Lord, at the moment you can only be repentant because your case is over. My, my case is over, yes. And I presume you are repentant. <laughs> yes. So, one reconciliation. Reluctantly repentant. <laughs> my Lord, his case was that I made no misdeclaration. <laughs> so my children had declared it. So, one reconciliation of 62.1f with H could be that if there is a misdemeanor of uh, misdeclaration and no case, criminal case is made out, then he just misses out on the election and the matter comes to an end. Yes. But if you want to take it further, 
and you file a case against him which is criminal, then age kicks in and you go through a conviction and five years. So there's a seven year period there and there's an election period here. Because why didn't you not uh, book him in any criminal case? Because you could do that. For any misdemeanor, you could have done that. If you don't let him go and you don't take criminal proceedings, then there has to be some mechanism because if you take criminal proceedings, the mechanism is seven years. But if you do not take criminal proceedings, then there must be some way out also. Because it's short of that, because nobody bothered to take the person on for that misdemeanor. So, and I mean, this, that's this, this Ali Khan, but I think, can we go back to uh, Faisal Wabda's case, please? My Lord, yes. You said Samula is not mentioned. Samula is mentioned there. It's mentioned. Mm -hmm. no. yeah. 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 Therefore, it's mentioned, but, but, yeah. but not followed because Islamabad. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
My will, my lord, I will. Someone who has the opposite viewpoint, senior counsel, Mr. Makhdum Ali Khan. My well, lord, uh, the well, contrary I, viewpoint. I said all the respondents. Well, where is Mr. Shoaib Shaheen? He was here in the morning. Would he be canvassing the contrary viewpoint? Shoaib Shaheen, you are going to go? Mr. Babur Awans uh, yeah. supported uh, the lifetime ban in the uh, Samuel of Baloch case. So he might be here. कौन बोल रहा है आप आप किस को आप किस पॉइंट मिस्टर कयूम बोल रहे हैं नो नो व्हाट अबाउट योर सेल्फ व्हाट अबाउट योर सेल्फ व्हाट अबाउट योर सेल्फ व्हिच व्यू आर यू सपोर्टिंग लाइफटाइम बैन मोलोड आई एम सपोर्टिंग द लॉ आई एम अगेंस्ट लाइफटाइम बैन अच्छा आपके साथ जो खड़े हैं वो क्या कहते हैं वो वो अपोज कर रहे हैं वो अपोज कर रहे हैं तो आप आइए जरा इस्लाम बाबा जरा अपनी आप हमें दीदार कराइए वी डोंट नो मिस एनी वैल्यूबल वर्ड अटर्ड बाय यू सो प्लीज बी हियर वी विल नाउ बी अजर्निंग दिस केस एंड वी वुड लाइक टू मे बी वी अपॉइंट सम पर्सन फ्रॉम द अदर साइड इफ वी कैन से बल्कि बल्कि अगर आपको कोई और सपोर्ट कर रहा है उसको भी साथ लेके आए लाहौर से बस मेरे नंबर में कौन है केस में सुबह का केस था ये सैयद असगर हुसैन सब्जवारी ये केस है काशि महमूद का आप किस पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू को सपोर्ट कर रहे हैं क्योंकि ये आपने सुबह का केस ये ये इशू है आपके केस में आप लाइफ टाइम बैन सपोर्ट कर रहे हैं या नहीं नहीं जी मैं तो ये कहता हूँ कि सिंपल बता दें लाइफ टाइम बैन और फाइव ईयर बैन और नो बैन लाइफ टाइम लाइफ टाइम बैन सो माशाल्लाह आप खुद है तो आप आते ना सामने हम आप बार बार पूछ रहे हैं नहीं देखे हमें मावना चाहिए ना कि अच्छी बात है कि आप माशाल्लाह सीनियर वकील हम बी वर लुकिंग फॉर सम सीनियर काउंसिल टू कैन विज दी अदर पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू एज वेल सो वी कैन अंडरस्टैंड इट प्रॉपरली खैर आपने सारी बातें तो सुन ली आप बैठे हुए थे ना सुबह से नहीं नहीं सुन ली ना सारी बातें हम आज जर्न करेंगे अब तो तीन बज गए तो ये लोग भी आ जाएं शायद इनके लिए कल मुश्किल हो आना परसों पे रख लेते हैं फिर ये केस ठीक है ठीक है और अगर आप कोई एनी वन कैन सपोज आप किसका नाम तजवीज करें जिसको हम माइकल बना दें क्योंकि दूसरा कैनवस करें व्यू पॉइंट तो खैर न्यूट्रल होते हैं मगर क्योंकि वी हैव दी सीनियर काउंसिल हियर ऑलरेडी द प्रेजिडेंट इज हियर मिस्टर मखदूम अली खान इज हियर सर नंबर ऑफ अदर अटर्नी जनरल इज हियर आप भी इधर हो सकते हैं किसी केस में तो नहीं था मखदूम Case, Mr. Munir Malik was a micus. He was a micus then. Then we so saw these. There were number of Mr. Is Asma Jangi was there. Munir Malik sir was a micus. Samilabalo. Whether he will be how well he is. Was you link sir? In Samilabalo. No, but I thought the respondents would be opposing this. The respondents in these cases would not be opposing the uh, would be supporting the lifetime ban. Mr. Matumali Khan, you won everyone over. 
<laughs> Some of, all the respondents are now against the lifetime ban. I don't understand. So who's in who? Fact, in fact, my lord, the uh, my uh, the opposing side, yes, they were initially Only were of the fact that yes, it must be a lifetime. Prior to that, in 2018, we are the first, those who are making out that we should not be given a lifetime. We are for the five years. So only one thing is this, my lord. Uh, the whole uh, uh, scenario. I want to just add one. Thing. Thing, that is that a declaration and the conviction these are the two words which are very necessary to be adjudicated by this honorable court the one thing is this that the conviction which has been maintained by any criminal court that has to be given a uh, a kind of a, um, the, the seal of legality may be coming from the election commission of Pakistan because in that the original trial court has to send the record of that case to the commission so that afterwards that can be come into the force through the legality that next time ab ek aadmi ko saza ho gayi ek aadmi ko for 2 years under 199 200 of the rupa or the now present election act or under 470 one. That conviction will thereafter be sent to the by that court to the commission, election commission. The election commission will then going to file a complaint against the. आप उक्त सर बात कर रहे हैं ना आप अपनी तकरीर कर रहे हैं कुछ बता रहे हैं क्या आपके नज़र में? सर बात सर F one F की जो proceeding start होगी वो election commission की complaint से start होगी. मैं ये कहना चाहूँगा इसका फायदा क्या इस बात से ये फायदा है कि अगर सजा के आप कहते हैं कि बगैर कोर्ट के इस कंडीशन के आप कहते हैं कि डिक्लेयर किसी को नहीं किया जा सकता नहीं सर नहीं कोर्ट और कोर्ट वो कोर्ट जो इलेक्शन कमीशन को फिर भेजेगी और वहाँ से कंप्लेन इलेक्शन कमीशन की कंप्लेन पे हो सकता है ये आप कह سپریم کورٹ میں تاہیات نہلی کیس کی براہ راست سماعت اس وقت جاری ہے چیف جسٹریس قاضی فازیسہ کی سربراہی میں ساتھ رکنی لارجر بینچ ہے جو کہ نہلی کی مدت سے متعلق کیس کی براہ راست سماعت کر رہا ہے اس بینچ میں جسٹریس منصور علی شاہ موجود ہیں جسٹریس یاہی آفریدی جسٹریس امین الدین خان جسٹریس جمال مندخیل جسٹریس محمد علی مظہر شامل ہیں یقیناً آپ کی مہارت ہے پارلیمانی مہارت مگر یہ ذرا بہت ٹیکنیکل ایشیوز بھی ہیں تو ہم آپ کو ایک موقع بھی دیتے ہیں کہ اگر آپ کسی وکیل کو کرنا چاہیں یہ آپ کی مرضی ہے تو آپ کر لیجئے ہم آپ کی بات ہم نوٹ کر لی مگر وہ دیکھیں پھر ہم نے جتنے بہت ساری آگومنٹ دسکشن یقیناً آپ نے سنے ہوں گے تو آپ اگر کوئی کرنا چاہیں وکیل ہم کر لیں تو ہم پرسوں پر پھر اس کو رکھتے ہیں سماعت کے آغاز پر درخواست گزار امام بکش کیسرانی کے وکیل ساکب جلانی اور ایٹرنی جنرل روسٹرم پر آئے باسٹ ون ایف کے تحت ناہلی کے سزا پانچ سال کرنے کی قانون سازی کو سپورٹ کیا انہوں نے نواز شریف تاہیات ناہلی فیصلے پر بھی نظر ثانی کا کہا گیا چیف جسٹس نے اس موقع پر سوال کیا کہ درخواست گزاروں میں سے کون کون تاہیات ناہلی کی حمایت کرتا ہے جس پر درخواست گزار سناؤلہ بلوچ ایڈوکیٹ خورم ر ایٹرنی جنرل نے کہا کہ میں الیکشن ایکٹ میں دی گئی ناہلی کے مدت کی حماد کرتا ہوں اور عدالت سمی اللہ بلوچ کے مقدمے پر نظر ثانی کرے آرٹیکل باسٹ وان ایف کے تحت ناہلی کی سزا پانچ سال کرنے کی قانون سازی کو سپورٹ کر رہے ہیں نواز شریف تاہیات ناہلی فیصلے پر نظر ثانی ہونی چاہیے امیر بادشاہ کیسرانی کے خلاف درخواست گزار کے وکیل ساکب جلانی نے بھی تاہیات ناہلی کی مخالفت کر دی One is, you know, you win all or lose all. One is the middle way. The middle way is that Al Samarais was uh, uh, the law undid its effect. Can we have the list of those cases where? हर वक्त बाखबर रहना वक्त का तकाजा है बर वक्त बाखबर रखना हमारा फरीजा है अभी सुनो न्यूज के यूट्यूब चैनल को करें सब्सक्राइब बेल आइकन पर करें क्लिक और मुल्की और गैर मुल्की खबरों से रहें बाखबर यकीन के साथ